Hi, welcome to this video on my photography blueprint for Unreal Engine 4. As you can see, uh, I have set up this basic shot in the the mobile temple map, which comes with Unreal Engine 4. And first off, I'm going to show you some of the features. As you can see, this one's in black and white without any depth of field it looks like this and with it looks like that um, okay uh, you can also change saturation contrast contrast and exposure you can add some film grain if you want Uh, focus manually and here's some other shots I took earlier today okay so now I will be showing you how you can use this in your projects okay to start off open the zip file you just downloaded from the link in the description um, inside you'll find this folder and then these are the two that really matter uh, the config folder has the default input file uh, which basically states what keys um, I set to be used to control the variables of the camera and post-processing and whatnot um, you can change those keys in this file if you want or in the editor later on and the content folder includes my personal developer folder whatever um, so yeah these are the assets that this one isn't even very necessary though um, but this one the photo pond asset um, it's the blueprint that makes this thing work the way it does uh, it contains just the bare essentials for taking photographs if you will in game um, it's based off of uh, spectator class um, yeah uh, spectator class so you can just fly around whatever you won't uh, there is collision on it but it's not a very big um, size the collision so you can pretty much fly wherever you want just not through things if you will um, so yeah to get started with this you go to your unreal projects folder and for this demonstration I'll be using the reflections uh, example and you'll see the same two folders config content so what you do is you copy and you paste now because uh, apparently the reflections uh, example doesn't have a default input file uh, it won't ask you to overwrite but if it does be aware that if you overwrite it then your own controls that you set in the editor or wherever uh, will be well overwritten um, but yeah that's just something to be aware of um, what's next um, so yeah, then you go to the editor, open project, uh, reflections. And you're in here. Okay. Um, now this one might be a bad choice for me to demonstrate this because as you can see here, just press play to view fly through the level blah 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 you 
don't want that. So what we're gonna do is open the level blueprint real quick and and event begin play. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're gonna skip the the matinee like so. Compile. Okay. And then what you do is you go into the Mark II folder right here. And I've got this basic game mode set up so you can just uh, go to world settings, override game mode with photo game mode. Okay. And then press play. Oh, that's loud, 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 loud. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Then um, you can just fly around. Come on. Picture. Click. Uh, increase the uh, exposure. As of yet, the screenshots basically that you take um, are put in the saved folder, in the project folder. Screenshots, you can, there you can see it. This is uh, the shot I just took. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I'll show you uh, quickly my default uh, input so, uh, action mappings for depth of field toggle, fringe toggle, and then left mouse button just to shoot the picture. Fringe is shift F4, and depth of field is just F, F4, wow. Shift F for fringe, sorry. Um, high quality shot is left mouse button while holding shift so this one uh, basically takes a double resolution shot for you um, the axis mappings are special because they basically have the keys that I want to use for example for zoom I want to use page up to zoom in and page down to zoom out um, and what that actually means is that um, let's find it here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, zoom. Input axis zoom event. Uh, so whenever you press page up or page down or whatever key you want, um, the value here, axis value, is this value and this value or zero um, when you don't press any of these um, so the axis value is added to the current field of view and then clamp to 30 to 120 and then set the variable field of view to the new value uh, same goes for exposure and all the other things. Uh, the action buttons are basically toggles. Um, so for depth of field, I set the depth of field scale to 0 0.33 or mil. Um, same goes for fringe. When you press Shift F, it sets it to 1 or then when you press it again it sets it to zero etc um, you'll find these clamps by the way on the uh, the values of the uh, the variables that I'm setting just so you don't really um, break 
well, not break, but um, it'll look weird when you go past certain points on, for example, saturation, if you go above like two or something, um, it'll look really weird or, you know, messed up. Uh, same goes for a vignette. 1.5 is the max because at 1.5 it's basically just a circle shape where you can still see and the rest is black. Um, and uh, shooting a picture basically left mouse button executes this console command high res shot one the one is the multiplier for uh, for the resolution the picture is saved at or even rendered at so high quality shot with shift left mouse button as a multiplication multiplication value of two <coughs> excuse me um, and that means basically that um, whatever your screen size is for the window that you're playing in, um, window size, whatever. This basically doubles that on both uh, both axes, I guess. Uh, so you get twice as wide and twice as high resolution. So you could fit one of these four times into one of these. Actually, yeah. Um, another thing to notice is that every tick I am running a macro, uh, which basically contains some post process settings that get overridden with the values that I set in the main event graph. Uh, as you can see, there are some that I still need to implement right now. And that's basically how this works. Uh, I'll show you quickly the default keys I use for all the things, all the things. There we go. Um, yep, that's basically it. These values can be changed if you want. The keys can be changed if you want. Um, for example, the focus has a base value of 10 to increase or decrease the focus distance with. Um, but that wouldn't work very well if you, for example, use that same value on contrast. So this one is at 0.05 and negative 0.05 just so you get a little bit more control over specific values um, anyway this bindings part is basically the, uh, the config file for default input that I told you about earlier that's basically all these uh, mappings that are in here. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, yeah. Make sure that if you have a global post process or any post processing volume, um, I don't, well, this one probably has one. Let's see. Post process volume that if you want to use all the features um, of my camera blueprint then you should actually you should just put the blend weight or uh, did just untick enabled or put the blend weight on zero until you're done shooting your pictures and want to get back to making your awesome game um, then you can just enable it again and that about wraps it up
I'll quickly uh, demonstrate some more, um, yeah, some more features. Turn the volume down even more. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.